when I was in high school, my family and I went on a cruise. They have a little tiny island that the ship parks nearby. I guess you don't really park a ship, do you? You could anchor it to the floor. Seafloor. The ground. We were sitting on this little island, and I was sitting under a tree reading a book. And my family was like, oh, we're going to go snorkeling, and we're going to go do this. And there's a bunch of stuff to do on this beach. You should come with us to go do this, 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 this. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm happy right here. I've got a book under a tree. They said, you could read a book anywhere. Why do you want to read a book now? We could, we can go swimming in the ocean. I said, it's December. I'm sitting under a palm tree <laughs> reading a book when I should be at school. This is the best. The only way it could get better is if I finished reading the book and a coconut fell out of the tree and hit me in the head. And then I died and never had to go back. <laughs> My sister spent three hours trying to crack open a coconut that fell out of one of the trees. She using a snorkel to try to beat it open? Those bastards are hard to peel. Yeah, they don't want to come apart. No, they really don't. I kind of wonder what maniac saw one of those things and was like, Hey, I bet there's something delicious on the inside of here. And then once he got all the peel off the coconut, found this hard thing in the middle and went, I bet there's still something inside of this. <laughs> what kind of maniac would do that? Who opens a locked box through brute force, finds another locked box and says, I bet there's still something in there. Adventurers, my friend. And then on the plus side, if you eat too much coconut, it makes you poop yourself. So that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> when my sister that's three years younger than me was born, my mom thought my sister was retarded. Mentally retarded, huh? Because she wouldn't cry or scream or do anything. She would just lay in bed. Whereas I would literally scream myself to sleep. I would scream until I passed out. That's how I would go to sleep. So my mom took my sister to the doctor multiple times. The doctor was like, look, there's nothing wrong with your baby. She's perfectly healthy. She's passed all the mental tests we've done. You have a perfectly healthy, normal, quiet baby. Go home and enjoy your quiet baby. <laughs> my mom was like, if she's the normal, quiet baby, what's wrong with Zach? And the doctor was like, that's your question right there. <laughs> <laughs> and they never found an answer to it. No, they never did. My favorite game to play as a small child was Applesauce Bombs. I can't even guess what this could possibly be. And the way you play this game is by grabbing the nearest jar of applesauce and throwing it onto the floor because it makes a cool sound and it explodes all over the place. There are no points to this game. There's no scoring structure. <laughs> the only person who wins is the person playing the game. So everybody else has to clean it up and explain why your horrible child decided to throw a jar of applesauce onto the floor. What made you this way? I have no idea. This is why I'm terrified to have children. Because <laughs> I'll have a child, and they'll be exactly like me, and I'll have to kill them. <laughs> or they'll be nothing like me, and I'll have to kill them. Why would you have to kill them if they're nothing like you? Because then they like sports. People who like sports... <laughs> People who like sports grow up to be functional individuals. I was I was a horrible little devil child. I don't recall myself being quite so evil. Up until about the first grade, I was just a little tattletale. Ah, teacher, this person's not singing the right song lyrics. This person's intentionally singing the wrong lyrics. Oh, man, I would have hated you. And around first grade is when I realized, wow, I should shut my mouth. <laughs> and so from first grade to fourth grade, I was very, very quiet. And I distinctly remember that at one point in fourth grade, we all had to pass around pieces of paper with our name on it. And our classmates would have to write a compliment on them. And 90% of the compliments I got back were, you're really quiet. <laughs> like, that's supposed to be a good thing. Everyone else is getting messages. You are really cute. I like your hair. You are very positive. And all of mine are just, you're quiet. I like how quiet you are. You don't say much. You smell nice. You're quiet. Who said you smell nice? I've been wanting to get a milk crate for the back of my car. 
let me just start off by asking why i wanted an industrial milk crate not no, a no 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 why do you want a milk crate at all why do you need a milk crate so that i can put things like my bag that has my jumper cables in it and a bottle of washer fluid and an extra bottle of oil and gloves and things like that in the trunk of my car and they don't roll all over the place oh so you just need something to hold it in yeah and i just wanted a milk crate because milk crates are generally cheap but i'm weird so i want an industrial milk crate not one of those crappy ones that you can get at super walmart i'll assume they're all pretty brittle if you buy a cheap one. So yeah, you get a cheaper one from Walmart. They're like 15 bucks and they just fall apart. So I was driving to my girlfriend's house the other day. I've been looking on the side of the road to see if I find milk crates because you can always see one just sitting on the side of the road. So you wanted an industrial strength milk crate, but you're willing to pick one out of the garbage that's been rotting and... It's... How can it possibly be rotting? It's made out of like... I, oh my god, what is the name of the plastic? Um, um... Plastic becomes brittle! No, it's made out of, uh, it's made out of the same plastic they used to make, um... Polystyrene. No, it's not polystyrene. Polyethylene. No, it's not polyethylene. It's, oh my god. Polypropylene! Stop it! You're, you're messing with my head! Um, I, there are a lot of different kinds of plastics! It's made out of a very robust kind of plastic that they used to make playground equipment. Anyway, so I'm driving to my girlfriend's house. <laughs> yeah. Lo and behold, on the side of the road, I see a milk crate. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, free milk crate. I, I, I imagine you did say that out loud. You saw it and went, hey, Zach, free milk crate. Wow. <laughs> Good spot, Zach. I will go get that. You're not wrong. Anyway, <laughs> so I pull over, I grab the milk crate, throw it in the back of my car, and I'm very pleased with myself. Why wouldn't you? You just got a free milk crate. Free milk crate! They're like 30 bucks online. That's expensive. I don't want to pay that money. Oh, you, you found an industrial strength one, or was, was it crappy as well? Oh, no, it was an industrial strength milk crate. So it's a good milk crate. So someone threw out a good milk crate. And it probably fell off the back of somebody's truck. Mm -hmm. okay. So anyway, I grab it, throw it in the back of my car. So I, <laughs> I tell my girlfriend... I had to stop on the highway to grab a milk crate. And she's like, why? And I go, free milk crate. She's like, honey, I would have just bought you a milk crate. And I'm like, yeah, but this one was free. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, that's disgusting. <laughs> why? What? Why? I would have just bought you one. And I was like, yes, but free. You don't have to buy me milk crates. That's stupid. Picking one off the side of the road. Yeah, here It's good go. fiscal sense. And I'm recycling. <laughs> That's true, yep. And, uh, I'm not going to turn your nose up at that. You are reusing things. Yeah, because otherwise it's going to sit on the side of the road and never decay because it's made out of industrial plastic. So now you have a milk crate in the back of your vehicle. She says that's disgusting, and she's like, I'm going to tell your mom. <laughs> I said, she'll be proud of me. <laughs> and she's like, I don't think so. I think she'll think it's gross. And so she texts my mom and says, you will not believe what your son did. He grabbed a disgusting milk crate off the side of the highway and put it in the back of his car. And my mom goes... I raised him well. <laughs> so she approved. But then my mom did also say, it was a free milk crate. She said that? Yeah. So like, she's, she's explaining it to her. That's very important to me, is that it was a free milk crate. Mm -hmm. Did you actually wash it, though? Oh, yeah. I took it to a car wash, and I just blasted it with a power washer. It squeaky clean. Oh, so you put more effort into it than most people would. So I have a clean milk crate sitting in the back of my car now. And you're not even eating out of it, so it's clean oh. enough. It, it does the job. It was funny when I got to her house. She, she went to kiss me, and then she stopped, and she goes, Did you wash your hands? <laughs> I'm like, yes. Yes, I did. And then you lift up the box of milk crates. Also, I found some wild animals. <laughs> Pet the fur it. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I do still have that incendiary incident card. Playing cards. Oh, the casualty card that I gave you! <laughs> yeah. I have all 500 casualty cards. Well, minus that one, because uh, I gave it to you. <laughs> oh, do you want it back so you have a full collection? Oh, no, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I collect them or anything, I just still have them. Do you use them as trading cards or playing cards? I just keep them around. I think they're bookends right now. Congratulations, you have incendiary burns on your left shoulder! Congratulations, you got gonorrhea! <laughs> Was that one of the cards, too? Yes, one of the cards is gonorrhea. One of the other ones is <laughs> tubal pregnancy. Pregnancy in the fallopian tubes. Yes! So that doesn't sound pleasant, no. No! So, those little casualty card things, right? Yes. You're supposed to use them when you're doing training. Usually, they're issued to you in a little brown envelope that you can't see through. And you're only supposed to take it out of your pocket and open it if your Miles gear gets hit, which... It is pretty much just laser tag for the military. If your Miles gear goes off, it starts making a buzzing noise, and then one of the observer controllers has to come over and turn it off, and he tells you to pull the casualty card out of your pocket... And normally what they do before they do field rotations is they take all the casualty cards that they're going to use and they usually pick the ones that are most valid. 
third degree burns from incendiary rounds, or puncture wound to lower abdomen, or gunshot wound to face. Sergeant, while I was in the foxhole, I got gonorrhea. Don't ask questions. Or KIA. That's not really treatable, so they don't really use KIA a whole lot. But they also have a bunch of cards for random things, because the medics also use these for training. You have to guess what's wrong with a person based on the symptoms that they have from that card. Mm. So there's ones like tubal pregnancy and gonorrhea. What are the symptoms? Baby growing in the fallopian tubes. Hmm, wonder what that one is. But we were on a field exercise, and of course, everybody immediately opens their card to see what they got, because it's funny. <laughs> I hope I got a hologram foil one. Oh, this one's mythic! Awesome! Oh, but it's got a cost of six swamp. I don't even have a black deck! So, we were out in the field and we got those. Someone opens theirs up and they're just like, Guys, what's tubal pregnancy? <laughs> and we're just like, what?! I, it- Fair enough, I suppose you can develop that if you're in the army, because female soldiers exist, and they could start showing symptoms while they're serving in the battlefield. People still gonna fuck. (laughs) That wasn't what I was getting at, but yes, that's true. Do you think that love can bloom on a battlefield? Well, I think that you can certainly make love on a battlefield. (laughs) I did yesterday, in my foxhole, with an empty MRE. On the plus side, at least those blueberry pudding packages are getting used for something. (laughs) Field expedient Tenga. So anyway, he had his card that said dual pregnancy, and we were doing a field exercise, and then one of the observer controller was pointed at him and is like, You, you're injured, what's your casualty card? And he pulls it out of his pocket and goes, I have a tubal pregnancy. And the observer controller goes, Go back to fighting! <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even want to deal with it. <laughs> The casualty guard with two will pregnancy is either you go back to fighting or you're just KIA. <laughs> what? Because they don't want to deal with it. <laughs> I have a very slow long-term problem. We could treat it within the next three months. No, you're dead. Not my problem. My favorite one, I always I always kept one. Oh, as a, oh let me guess your favorite. Testicular torsion. No, not testicular torsion. You don't like think, testicular torsion? I think that was actually a card. I believe... If fallopian tube pregnancy is, then yeah, testicular torsion's gotta be one. My favorite one was laser burns to eyes. Uh, wouldn't know how you would treat that. Ice packets, maybe? <laughs> it's just bandaged. But I always... Anytime we would go out to the field, I had laser burns to eyes... <laughs> So every time we would go out to the field, I would I would take my card out, and it was always something boring, like puncture wound or yeah. gunshot wound to face. And yeah, I would put- that's so boring, getting shot in the face. <laughs> it happens so often. Who even thinks about it? This is just training. I would very carefully remove the staple, pull the staple out, slide my card out, and put laser burns to <laughs> eyes into it, and then staple it back together. I'm the hope that, that a random observer controller would be like, you're injured, what does your casualty card say? And I would say, I got shot in the face by Cobra Commander. 